So I'm Lewis Bush and I'm a photographer based in London. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. My project Pravity's Rainbow in a way began really early in my life because growing up in London I remember seeing all these places in streets where you'd have a row of houses and then you'd have a gap. But what I didn't realise at the time was a lot of those gaps were left over from one particular part of the war which was this campaign of rocket attacks on London. Later, I became more and more interested in the way that after the war, these rockets then went on to kind of shape space exploration in a very profound way, because this rocket, the V2, was the most kind of high-tech technology in 1945. And so, of course, the winners of the war then fought for this technology. That's most like evidence in the United States where the man who was really responsible for designing these rockets, Werner von Braun, then became a very important figure at NASA. Roger, zero T, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. So Werner von Braun was a German aristocrat who became obsessed really with space exploration. He was prepared to work first with the German army and then with the Nazi because he thought they would give him the resources to build rockets that would go to space one day and was probably the single person most responsible for the Apollo moon landings. He can both be a, a space pioneer who we might admire and he can also be someone who was involved indirectly in the Holocaust. The title, uh, Depravity's Rainbow, is a reference to Thomas Pynchon's novel, uh, Gravity's Rainbow, which refers to the arc of a rocket. You know, a rocket flies in a rainbow from takeoff to landing. And of course that rainbow is made by gravity, which pushes the rocket back down to Earth. So one of the points the project is trying to make is that we can't celebrate present day achievements without acknowledging those were only possible because the technologies that made them happen were built on technologies that emerged out of events like the war. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept and one we intend to win, and the others too. As we all know, I think the moon landings weren't about science, they were about politics, they were about competition. And so, in a way, the project became about exploring how politics and technology are very interlinked. So I kind of trace this history back from the Cold War back to Nazi Germany, where again, they're often quite clear in the V2 project. Um, that is a project that was very much influenced by politics and ideology. And then actually even earlier, the project traces it right back, in fact, to the colonial era and looks at the way that the kind of imperialist mentality also then shaped thinking about space exploration. You know, we're very, I think, conscious today about the language we use and the way we talk about colonialism and imperialism. But one of the very few areas where it's still okay to use a term like colonized is in space exploration, where people often talk about colonizing other planets as if that's not in any way problematic. There are two sets of archive imagery. One of those is imagery from the V2 project, so from about 1912 to 1945. So this is an image made during the development of the V2 rocket at Peenemünde in northern Germany. The Nazis were putting so many resources towards the V2 because they hoped that it would change the direction of the war. The technology in terms of things like electronics and guidance didn't really exist so they were having to invent things. You know, they launched hundreds of these rockets, lots of them, the vast majority of them went wrong. <laughs> and so this is kind of film showing a rocket just after launch that's obviously failed and is falling straight back to ground. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Then the other archive is material from 1945 to about 1969 from the Apollo project from the NASA. So this is a kind of very famous image, but it's also such a strange image to me because you have this flag, this very strong symbol standing in this basically wasteland and it poses that question, what was this all for? Most people in the field are quite doubtful about the scientific value of this. A lot of what we kind of could learn from landing on the moon, people already basically knew through other means. 
And the idea with those two archives is to create kind of visual connections and contrasts that help to draw out some of the ways that these projects were very linked. And then alongside those two archives, there are these blue images, which are more recognisable as cyanotypes. And these are contemporary images that I've photographed from locations across Europe that were key in one way or another to the V2 project. The first one is in France, in fact, and it's a huge underground bunker that was built by the Nazis. And the plan was that they would bring the parts to build the rockets by train. They'd put the rockets together and then they'd fire them continuously out at London. And the other blue one is a picture taken inside another set of tunnels in central Germany. And these tunnels were eventually where the V2s were built. It was kind of half a factory and half a concentration camp. And the V2s were constructed by concentration camp prisoners and then taken by train. Some of these places that are almost kind of forgotten today, they are literally the frontiers from which we went into space. <laughs> 